Okay, so I guess we're gonna be creating this. I don't know what to call it, but uh, <laughs> it's just stuff in Houdini. So um, I mean, we're just gonna mess with this, see what we can work with. But uh, it's gonna be fun stuff to work with. I really can't even call it a name, honestly. <laughs> but let's go ahead and do this. Let's see how this whole thing gonna work out. Cause well, it's just me messing around. So I'm just showcasing what I what I'm doing right now. So let's do this. Okay, so this is one of those things that I really don't consider a tutorial, but it's kind of fun being that it's in Houdini. Now, it's not really a tutorial, so don't consider it one. Now, it's the same effect achieved by Peter Clays, I'm going to go ahead and say it right now. Peter Clays told you, I told you this. So, I would actually say this is like one of his works. I really don't consider it mine, but I'm going to go ahead and showcase the thing. So, I'm going to begin this whole thing by dropping in a sphere, right? And for one, we're gonna make it a nerves. As the whites and nerves is, well, it's smoother and actually likely to make more sense later as to why nerves actually gonna work out better. So we're just gonna leave it at the default, uh, whatever settings. Then we're gonna go ahead and drop in a transform. Now a transform, we're just gonna make it larger. So we're just gonna increase the scale, to make it bigger, and pretty much how you want to consider this is that uh, this is where your, all your points are going to be manipulated later on so these are the points that you're actually going to be working on and for one this doesn't to be a doesn't have to be a sphere you can actually drop in a tube or something like that something that has some kind of shape that you would like to kind of implement so in my case i'm gonna go ahead and drop in a mountain to create some displacement um for the sphere over here, so I'm gonna increase the height a little bit, uh, roughness, reduce that, and pretty much you're gonna have to play around with this. And so, something like the um, these all this stuff, you'll probably have to put a like a sign expression or something or animate them. But for me, in my case, I'm gonna just leave them at the default, being that I never render my files, matter of fact, never have. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and drop in um, what scatter let's drop in a scatter and we're gonna be scattering in some points now we don't need 150 we just need a few to um kind of showcase the stuff no for me 150 actually should work pretty well and for one i haven't really actually tried it out because this is actually 100 points but this is 150 but uh, it should work out pretty well i believe uh, i did work out for me well so now i'm gonna go ahead and drop in a vop up right after this now in the vop up the first port, the one who gets plugged in into the first port is the one who gets man the data point data manipulated. So in our case, the scatter is what's going to go into the first port. And the second port, I'm going to plug in the original sphere. Now, don't forget, this is 100 points, and this one has uh, 150 points to it, of which you can actually put 200 or something. It doesn't matter. I don't think it matters anyway. So in the vops over here well you don't see nothing on the viewport but uh everything is still there as fast for points everything is still in there so i'm gonna go inside the vops up and now uh, inside vops what we're gonna go ahead and do is actually play with uh with all these um data right now for one we plug something in inside the second port so what we need to do as well to actually under the geometry is actually import the attribute for whatever attribute it is that you want now in our case if you want to learn attributes pretty quicker if you're just beginning in Houdini if you click on the output of the single you can tell what attribute shortcut well it's not really a shortcut but that's the name that's given as far as for instead of this long name there's always this short and nice name that's actually put out so P in our case is position and actually that's what we want in our case so under the input attribute over here the attribute that we want is P in capital exactly the same way you saw it over there and the up input index if you remember that's zero that's one that's two and that's three so everything begins from zero in Houdini or in computers basically so one is actually where we're gonna get our stuff from so up index one right there so now that means we're getting the sphere the original sphere one now what we're gonna go ahead and do is actually create a distance VOP over here and what the distance VOP is gonna help us do is calculate the distances from the small sphere to the big sphere 
now if you remember one is actually to the inside and the other one is to the outside if I can actually show my points now if you're gonna create the calculate the distance from this point over here to this point over here you can tell that that point from there to like let's say this point over here is actually closer so the distance from here to here is closer than from here to here I would say so essentially we're gonna be getting higher speeds in the long run the higher the, the far the farther the distance the um, farther the movement you're gonna be get the faster the movement you're gonna be getting eventually so in our case how we're gonna actually work this out is actually dropping a multiply now you're gonna be getting our distance and what we're gonna be multiplying our distance with is uh, the time so to speak so you're gonna multiply with the uh, frames so you can imagine that um, it's gonna start out slow and as the frame number gets high it just goes up faster and faster so you probably want to use a ramp or something like that so like it goes from 0 to 1 ramp the most plus from 0 to 1 so it kind of goes slow then quicker but in my case I'm gonna just showcase it like this and then right after that what we're gonna go ahead and do is actually drop in a transform matrix so you can actually start manipulating the point data and what we're gonna go ahead and do is actually get this point position into the point position over here so it's just I'm just getting from the point position to the point position over here now actually if I plug this in out directly as it is nothing should change because nothing has been manipulated so in our case what we're gonna go ahead and do is actually if you look over here you gotta translate rotate scale blah 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 but in our case we just wanna rotate in the Y so in our if I actually go ahead and manipulate this you can actually see you actually rotate in um, the points inside the viewport now you can actually drop in a float to vector cause now if I actually look oops if I actually look well you see that the colors actually match up so that's a vector that you need to be plugging in over here hence the need to drop in a flow to vector to actually re um, assign well how do I say this you wanna bring back the flow to vector you wanna create a vector let's just put it like that you wanna create a vector so you need a flow to vector to in order to plug this in over here because if you actually drop in a float this is a float attribute in this kind of green it's a float attribute and if you plug it in over here you can tell Houdini tells you like with this dotted line like um, I can see what you want but uh, that's not the thing that I usually get every single time I'm getting stuff so now I'll plug this into the Y port over here so we got our multiply and it plugs it into the Y so directly into the Y so X is 0 and Y is 0 but everything else X is 0 and Z is 0 so Y is the only thing that gets the data fed in and pretty much that's pretty much it for as fast for the VOPs now if I actually go ahead and play this you can see the points just keep on spinning and spinning and spinning and don't forget that this is all procedural so your mountain still affects the stuff so if you reduce the height or something like that it's still gonna affect the, the way it plays and stuff so you might want to animate some of these parameters so we got that set up now we might want to actually drop in a trail sap of which it trails the sap hence the name trailly tangs over there <laughs> my goodness how do you come up with these names now we want to create a result type to connect those polygons and we want to increase the number to like 10 or so and for one we don't want to close the rows we just want to leave it open as lines and well I think we need colors because this thing is not looking as good in black so I would say that's actually pretty good you might want to increase the length if it's you know like too short so 17 in my case now we're gonna go back to VOPS and actually put the colors from VOPS and we're gonna do this for every single point so easy way to do that we're actually dropping a random so a random VOP and we're gonna get every point number so every point number plug it in over here to every so you can imagine that 
here you have 150 points so now to every single point number you're gonna apply or you're gonna give it a random value which is gonna be in our case signature type of 3d color so 1d integer and our output of a 3d color and that produces a vector that's essential for dropping that output into the point color so both of them match and if you actually look now you got different colors for every single point of which that's you know pretty cool <laughs> now you can actually go ahead and start doing your test renders and stuff if you're happy with it for me I'm not really happy why is that well for one they're too even and well ain't nothing much to it for real so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, for one uh, let's um let's remove that specularity from there so I'm gonna go to my material over here and drop in a constant right inside and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and let me put it this way this side and I'm gonna go ahead and drag this to this one right here so actually I'm gonna go ahead to my um, OBJ level and drop this in on top of this so make sure you just drop it on top now if I actually go ahead into my It'll be there over here. I got a material set up as a sharp constant. So now, actually, if I go ahead and render, it doesn't do all those um specular highlights and stuff. So big difference when you consider the specular highlights and stuff. So let's go ahead and um continue working on this a little bit. It's kind of more pretty much finished but let's say we want to get the same effect Peter had or you know he had this effect where he actually fades out so in our case we're gonna make this kind of like um, not not these even cubes 